Hello everyone and welcome back to another tutorial with Oscar Lars Painting Studio. In this tutorial we are going to examine how to paint a full-on dire wall that is black, that has blood, and that has exposed bone. We hope you're going to enjoy this tutorial. Let's begin. In step one we apply a dry brush of Corvus Black to soften the contrast a bit of the next few steps. It doesn't look like it does much right now, but it does add softness to it and it helps everything to look more smooth later on. As you can see, I'm holding my thumb on the head and the tail, and I'm doing so to help support the weak anchor point this model has to the base to ensure the ankle doesn't snap off. In step two, we add an Eschen Gray dry brush on the top of the coarse black. I test the brush on the base there as you can see, and this helps to make sure that the dry brush isn't too heavy, meaning that you apply uh, too much paint too quickly. This time you can clearly see the effect that the paint has on the sculpt. To succeed with a dry brush you want to go slow, applying thin coats over and over again to build up the highlights. After the Ashen Grey I apply a coat of Skaven Dinge Blight and focus this mainly sweeping it from above and giving it a bit more of a zenithal feel to the application. The dry brush now is looking great, but we want to add some more bright gray to it. I hear I'm using Administratum Gray with a dirty brush, and the dirty brush means that you don't wash the brush out in between steps. I'm applying this to mainly from the top, but don't mind getting a few swipes in from the underneath well. I also make sure I hit the feet here to give it a little bit more definition. Using a dirty brush here allows us to make a bridge between the Skatum Dinge Blight and the Administratum Gray highlights that we're gonna do in the next steps. And lastly, I add with a new brush Pure Administratum Gray and I do not go heavy-handedly on this. In the next step, I go in with Corvus Black again, and I clean up the grainy areas a little bit uh, so that it mats down the overall look a bit. This will help to keep the wolf more black than lighter gray. Now I add some more Administratum Gray focused highlights on the fur parts with a fine detail brush. Lastly, I add a few highlights with a mix of Corvus Black and Administratum Gray just on the areas I want to bring out a little bit more. And you don't need to do this step unless you are picky, just like me. And now it's time to add a pop of color to this model. And in this step, I add some Wasdaka Red to all the exposed flesh areas. I do this on top of the bone as well that protrude from the fleshy areas. This way it will look like the flesh is attached to the bones further in. I then add a second coat of Wasdaka Red uh, to get a better solid coat. And since we will be using Blood for the Blood God later, you don't need to be super thorough here. But I like to make sure that the most noticeable areas are at least one solid coverage. The next step is to add Cadium Flesh Tone and mix it with the Wasdaka Red to create a muted pink and give this fleshy color some definition. It doesn't have to be a perfect, but you want to dot and drag the brush around the areas to define the edges a bit more. And now I add some Sandry Dust and will paint the bones with this color. As you can see, the paint sits nicely on top of the Wastaka Red. Once the sandry dust has dried, I add Agrax Urshade to all of the bone. And honestly, you can add the Agrax Urshade to the flesh as well. It will help to make it look a little older and a bit rotten. And for this next step, I take some Shapti bone and we're gonna highlight the bone. I add this Shapti bone about two thirds down the ribs here. 
This helps to make a gradient on them, which looks really nice. I then add a final highlight of a mix of pallid witch flesh and ushapti bone to give the bone a nice pop against the darker red and black. And now it's time to paint the eyes, and I'm doing my eyes red, using Evil Sun Scarlet on top of the Wasdaka Red. This helps to separate it from the flesh, and you can use green or blue or whatever you want really, I just recommend that you're using a saturated color here for them to stand out against everything else that's quite muted. And lastly for the eyes, I am adding some Fire Dragon Bright to the palette, and I dip my tip of my brush to add a fine dot to the eyes. This will help to make them look nice and glowing in the sockets. And in the last step for this puppy here is to add Blood for the Blood God to the fleshy parts. And this really finishes off this model nicely and give it that dark feel that we all love so much about Warhammer. And that's it! We hope that you liked this tutorial and that it will help you paint all of your direwolves. This video was made possible by our amazing patrons who kindly donate to keep this public project going. If you want to become a patron, don't hesitate to head over there and pledge your subscription. We post some longer videos there whenever we have extra materials to spare. You can also support this project by shopping some Oscar Lars Painting Studio merchandise. The links to these are down in the video description. The intro video was created by Robbie Shillstone. The editing was done by the amazing Martin Kramer. The sculpt we use is the new Dire Wolf from the Warhammer Age of Sigmar by Games Workshop. Palette and brush used are from Redgrass Games. And please don't forget to smash those like and subscribe buttons. Thank you for watching and happy painting!